All right, guys. Um, to all my S10 friends out there, uh, I am going to show y'all exactly how I did all this to my S10. But I want to go over with pretty much what I have, which is not much at all, which I've already uh, showed y'all what I've used. Of course, tape. It's always good to have tape. All right. And the basic colors, which uh, when you go to buy paint, I like it the Wicked colors, the, uh, the Create Tech uh, colors, but you gotta make sure that it's a uh, multi-purpose airbrush, uh, multi-surface, uh, that way you can actually clear it, because um, some are made for just fabric and certain things, but uh, so far this has been the best paint for me, I'm pretty sure. There are a lot more out there uh, that are better, but this is all I can find at a local uh, Hobby Lobby. Black, for a lot of your uh, outlining and shading. Uh, white, to high bright, uh, you know, to highlight your rivets and stuff. And then, of course, uh, brown for all your rust. So, uh, but each time you mix this, for every Uh, every time you put a little bit in the in the cup of this this gun here, I got this gun, which I got a lot of uh, expensive airbrushes, but I decided to use it's a cheap airbrush off eBay for like twenty bucks. Uh, I prefer Gravity Fed; is it is a lot easier. Uh, it does not take much. Um, any color you add get this uh, this 4012 high performance reducer that's what reduces it uh, for like every uh, four or five drops if you're using a little eyedropper you put two drops of this to it it's basically two percent uh, of what you're using um, but I can show you here uh, in a minute now Oh, also, uh, it's best you can get, here, I'll show you. You can get this compressor on eBay, which is cheap. It's got a moisture trap, everything you need. But uh, you can buy the whole kit. And, of course, this uh, airbrush holder came with it. But... Go and get a, uh, I don't have a whole piece anywhere, but basically the Scotch-Brite pads, the red ones and the green ones, uh, when you go buy them, they're, they're super thick. And basically what you want to do is you want to rip them in half. And then once you rip them in half, then you, you know, rip them vertically until you get the odd, you know, the odds and ends. I mean, very un excuse me, uneven with the holes right through it. That's what will make you rust. And of course, I got you know different kinds for different shapes. But uh, now for the rivets, I basically just got a hole puncher, which you can get at any Walmart, uh, dollar store, or anything like that, and punch one hole. But you can already see, this is where, how I use my rivets. You know, so, uh, of course, this right here is for highlight and diamond plate. When you, if you got stencils for diamond plate, that's what that is. Um, but without further ado, I will show you uh, how this is done. Basically, what we're going to do is, I'm going to outline with the tape. There's just simple... Uh, overlaps uh, where it's just a single overlap and then I'm gonna show y'all how to make uh, a nice clean line and put rivets on both sides with the uh, metal kind of overlapping it uh, so you'll see how it was all overlapped on my truck so uh, I guess we'll go ahead and get to it so give me a few seconds all right guys let me go ahead and show y'all how I did this. All right, 
go ahead and take two pieces. Now, of course, this is going to be on a smaller scale. But you ain't got to press the tape on there super tight. And I've already painted this panel uh, a metallic color already. But the good thing about this metal, you can make it as straight as possible. All right, we'll do a little, little vertical piece here. Now, this will be your, your overlap, like the metal is actually overlapped, and then you, if you want to bring uh, like a small piece, uh, I ain't straight, hold on. And grab another piece. And then just put it right beside it. Don't put it too, too close because you don't want the uh, line super thin, but try to make it as even as possible. All right. And you can see that's probably, uh, I don't know, a quarter inch. Not, I mean, not a quarter inch, but... Uh, a, a, mil, a couple millimeters apart, they ain't, but just enough to where it's almost got a line like if you were using a, a marker and you made a straight line. Alright, let's see. Alright, we'll go ahead and get started. And uh, I like to use start off with black, but you can uh, actually start off with uh, brown to get that rust, but you can go either way. And this paint will go a long ways. So 10 to 1 odds, I'll have some left over. If you ain't got a stir stick, just take your thumb, put it over the cup, and shake it up real good. people that don't know anything about airbrushes this is a dual action airbrush when you press it down it's just gonna blow air but the more you pull back the wider the spreads gonna be so you can see how it's because right now I got it too too thin Oh, it's also good to have a air adjuster here. There we go. It's working a little bit better. up a little bit thicker all right here we go
and just keep going over in layers. Spray it a little bit darker if you want to. But if you're gonna go wider, make sure you back up. Alright. Let that dry for a few seconds and then and just pull your tape off. All right, now you got your line for rivets being on both sides. All right, now when you go to spray, spray more of the paint on top of the tape rather than the metal itself. You can see that line starting to show up, but just get right at the edge. Just, you'll see it getting slowly a little bit darker and darker each pass Give it a little bit of time in between coats here. It dries pretty much instantly. All right. Now we can remove this. All right, now we got our overlap. Now, now time for the rivets. All right, usually I got mine far enough away to where I can line this line up where I know how to set my rivets. And then and just kind of slowly color them in uh, if you want to take a piece of paper and measure and make a whole strip of holes you can or you can just do it like I'm doing. That's coming out pretty good. Now we got the overlap done in here. So uh, now we'll do each side.
And be real careful because sometimes you can scrape, uh, scratch it, which that's going to be, you know, it's easy to fix because by the time you put the rust on it, you ain't going to see it, no way. But you can line it up or you can make your rivets uneven. There we go. Now we got that part done. Now we're gonna do the shading. Just slowly, uh, just keep pulling back until you start seeing the shade. And then just over a half moon. That's gonna be your upper shade. So if light's coming down, then, or wherever, which way uh, the light's coming from, that's where you'll set the shade. You want the shade in the direction of the sun on the top. Now, most of the shading uh, for the upper shades done, you can go below and actually spray a little bit of white if you want it. Uh, I mean, if you really want to do it super clean, but uh, because of the metal color, it's it's going to pop either way it goes. So, uh, but what I'd like to do is after you got all that done, then just run a, a thin line. right across the bolts. a shadow a very light shadow along with the bolts I mean the rivets I'm sorry and you can you can lightly see uh, cause a lot of times when you put a lot of rivets together it, it puts strain on the metal and of course, you just add that a little bit. All right, now we change colors real quick. I always pour my paint back in here. All right, we're going to do a little bit of white. switching colors if you're using one gun 
Now, if you got more than one gun set up, it's a little bit easier, but make sure you clean the inside the, the bowl out because you don't want to mix the paint. Just put a little bit of reducer in there, clean it up. Now we're gonna grab the, uh, the stencil again with the rivets. Now try to line everything back up, except this time you're only gonna spray the top of that hole. Put my gun down here. You just try to get it over. All right, and just spray the right at the top, but you can. you'll get the idea. There you go. Now you can see the shades in it now. And just, just spray it right, I mean dead center at the top. brighter Now we go. Now we got it. Uh, now what we're going to do now, I mean, if you want to, uh, to show that this metal is actually overlapped, you can, you know, put your edge. And then just do a light, light coat. And if you look, you can see a slight... 
a slight overlap. Alright, now the fun part. Switch colors again. If y'all have to fast forward through some of this, y'all can. Believe me, it won't hurt my feelings. Believe it or not, the dinging you're hearing on my phone, that's uh, a lot of people commenting on my truck, which I am very, very glad. I didn't think that many people would actually like my truck. All right, now we're going for the rust. Now, a lot of times, if you want to keep it like this, to kind of just keep it, uh, which one gentleman said it looked like an airplane uh, set up on it, which pretty much it is. If you want to keep it like this, this would not look bad at all. It would look pretty awesome if the whole vehicle was done just like this without any rust. All right, now. I can use this template here. You don't want to put tape back over the rivets because it'll take the paint off because there's no clear coat over it. And just a little bit of a little bit of rust. And it don't have to be perfect, but you you'll be able to see it. There we go. Alright. Now, stay far back. But lightly. Don't cover the rivets to the point where you can't even see the rivets no, no more. But you want to rust those rivets out just a little bit. And just do circular motions. And you'll start seeing it turn to rust a little bit. That's all you need. And there's no particular pattern. That's the good thing about rust. Alright. Of course you can see where I overlapped, which I can go back over with black and you won't even see that. Alright. Now again, same thing with the, like I did with the black you would do with the rust. Alright, now, if you're dealing with the uh, rivets, the underlap under where this metal overlaps, you can go a little bit thicker, have your uh, brush kind of wide, and then slide it down, and you'll see where your rust drips, and you can put it in any layer, and see, and then as you, as you pull down, pull the trigger forward to go to a finer line. And then you can go back over it again if you want to. Make it a little bit darker. 
there we go. And then like these right here. Right over where the black is. Same thing, but you pretty much get the idea. You get right up under a rivet. And you don't even necessarily have to go into here if you want to. You can going between but I'm gonna show y'all now where you you know make it a little bit darker just shade everything in now this is where my pieces come in right here spray on it kind of light and then get thicker and thicker and just don't worry about that thing moving around and then now you can see this the spots and the little in-betweens then you can go back over it lighten it up and then just darken it in a little bit and then you don't run runs off of it, you can. And you can change this up any way you want to. Again, start off light, go a little bit dark, and spray the edges. Switch it up, grab another piece. There we go. Alright, thin this out a little bit more. I'm just basically airbrushing back over. Or if you want to do spray thick right here. And then just Just dab. All right, and you can do the same thing. I'll show you here. You can take a little bit of black here. And just put it on your finger. Dab it on the sponge because there are black pits and rust. And it, ain't, it don't even have to be perfect. You can just, of course, that's too dark, but it don't matter. Again, you can. Uh, if you want to make it quick, all right.
and you can go over it with rust. You can just put rust anywhere you want to. But each layer that you put after you let it dry, it gets it enhances the color. 